Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss the recommendations of Woodside Dispatch in the year of 1854. We knew that at the time in 1854, Governor General was a Lord Dalhousie. He was the Governor General, and this Gover Governor General, Lord Dalhousie, appointed a commission under the chairmanship of Charles Wood. At the time, by the time he was a chairman of the board of directors of the company. So by the time this Charles Wood was the chairman of the board of directors of the company, which company? East India Company. Lord Dalhousie appointed Charles Wood as a chairman of this committee. And this commission examined the education system of the country and submitted its report in 1854. So Lord Dalhousie has given the responsibility to Charles Wood to examine the educational system of the country at the time and uh, submit the report. So finally, in 1854, he submitted one report. Uh, so that report was called as a Hurta Kidu, Hurta Kidu, or Woodside Dispatch also we can call it. Uh. So basis on this Hurta Kidu, or Woodside Dispatch, the current education system of the country also functioning. So since then, the same maximum, most of the rules are common. So basis on Hurta Kidu only, current education system is uh, going on. And uh, the most important thing is Charles Wood is known as a father of a modern education system. He was called as a father of modern Indian education system. And uh, this H.R. James, he called Urta Kidu as a Magna Carta. He called Urta Kidu as a Magna Carta. We know that in a Magna Carta is a, what is a documentation of human rights. So he compared, H.R. James compared Urta Kidu as a Magna Carta. And we shall see the highlights of Woods Dispatch. So in this Woodside Dispatch, so he mentioned, he has given intimation that the British government is responsible for the spread of the education in India. By 1813 to 1835, there was a confusion between Indian, Indian, uh, Indian people and uh, Britishers who should take the responsibility. But clearly Woodside Dispatch has mentioned that the British government, British government only the responsible for the spread of education in India and uh, the aim of education. So he recommended that aim of education should be to develop the intellectual skills and moral values of the Indians. So aim of education must be develop the intellectual skills and moral values among the Indians. So and coming to the medium. So which medium should be introduced? So he mentioned that English medium only for those who has a knowledge of English and who are passionate about the English language. Those who are interested to learn English. So for them English medium. But the remaining who who are, who are not interested or who doesn't know the English language for them, mother tongue should be introduced. So education must be continued in mother tongue. In each state, the education department is headed by director of public instruction. And he also recommended that in every state, education department should be appointed. So who must be the head of this department is a director of public instruction. In each state, one director of public instruction person should be appointed to look after the education system and central and state government universities uh, should be established. Clearly, he mentioned that in a central and state, uh, these both governments uh, should establish universities. And as per that, uh, where he mentioned uh, to establish Bombay, Madras, Calcutta, in three places, a university should be established. And uh, what is the, um, means, uh, what is their duty? This university's duty is to monitor the affiliated colleges and give suggestions for their development. Universities should monitor the affiliated colleges and give suggestion for their development. So they should observe the affiliated colleges and educational standards should be maintained. And these colleges, affiliated colleges, should maintain what educational standards. If they are not maintaining the educational standards, it's the responsibility of the universities to look after them, to guide them in a proper way. And it should conduct examination and award degrees. So universities should look after what is that? They should conduct the exams in the universities as well as in the affiliated colleges and award them degrees. Right. So that is the responsibility of the universities. And these are things were mentioned by the Charlie Sewell. And a religious neutral policy in education system, they should follow the secular policy. They should not be favored to any one religion. They should be neutral towards the educational institutions. Coming to the women's education, women's education, what he mentioned. So for the development of women education, even if the government is not directly involved, Actually, women education should be looked after by the government. If the government is not directly involved, then financial assistance to private educational institutions. They should provide financial assistance to private educational institutions. That is the responsibility of the government. Either 
they should look after or else they should give financial assistance to private institutions and uh, teacher training institutes to prepare uh, well trained teachers for the education system what should be established here teacher training institutes should be established to give the training to the teachers and vocational education according to the needs of the students and government's responsibility to provide the vocational education according to the needs not only the students even he clearly mentioned that teachers also should be trained in a vocational education teachers also should be trained to, in a vocational education to teach students and a grant in aid to private institutions government should provide a grant in aid that means financial assistance to whom to the private schools or institutions educational institution should be divided into these phases the beginning is the primary school primary schools secondary schools high schools colleges universities so this is the way educational levels educational levels were divided right and woods dispatches okay, anyhow he submitted the report and it was accepted by the dalhousie and after the dispatch committee after the implementation of this act what happened what were the results we shall see now so establishment of educational departments so in each state educational departments were established in each state educational departments were established and as per the educational levels as we have seen that primary high school colleges and right so that levels that level of education were introduced in each and every state and this continued until the establishment of national education commission in 1964 so this educational levels were continued up to what up to 1964 until national education commission came and uh, they formulated rules they made a plan to what is that provide the grants to the educational institutions in a private individuals and institutions but uh, the thing is uh, they neglected teacher training and mother tongue mother tongue so they did not provide teacher training to the teachers and uh, they did not focus on mother tongue they only focused on what english language english medium so these both things were neglected in 1857 as per the recommendations of woods dispatch they established universities in calcutta madras and bombay so these runs functions as per the western education system apart from teaching on the model of london universities it was responsible for conducting examination and awarding degrees see here these universities function what based on model of london universities these based on model of london universities apart from that these universities conduct examinations and they award the degrees so whatever the words the dispatch mentioned to look after the affiliated colleges the same things were continued by these universities by the time if you observe in the secondary schools how many nearly 30000 students were studying in the government schools government secondary schools in a madras university if you observe nearly in a 13 affiliated government colleges 2000 students were studying by the time university entrance exam we knew that matriculation examinations they were conducting to entered into the university so this exam was introduced right matriculation exam was introduced we all are aware that in 1857 first independent war was uh, have uh, completed so due to this uh, what happened the transferring of powers from uh, east india company to british king by the time the queen victoria was a queen a queen of the england so this powers has indian uh, government powers has gone to the under the queen victoria instead of east india company right this is the most important thing in 1871 what happened the state education departments were created charles wood recommended to establish the state education departments right so based on that in 1871 in every state state education departments were established with the responsibility of administration so to the state governments the state governments responsibility to look after the education system in their state and educational institutions have the opportunity to collect educational tax from the public so these educational departments or these educational institutions they have a right or opportunity it was given by the british government to collect the educational tax from the public to run the schools or to pay the salaries to the teachers and coming to the female education female education already we have studied in 1848 what happened savitri bai phule right and uh, mahatma jyoti bai phule they established schools and kandukuri vireshalingam ishwara chandra vidyasagar they all have established schools but uh, we did not discuss about the university level right in the university levels also what is that admission of women to universities uh, in which year it was happened in a 1877 in india in india 1877 
But uh, if you compare with uh, England, uh, London, in the University of London allowed in uh, 1878, comparing to the England, we are one year before them. Right in 1877 only, in a Calcutta University, our Indian uh, Calcutta University have given admission to the women. So it has encouraged the female education. In a Madras University in 1881, women are entered. In a Bombay University in 1883. If we look at this point, important, very, very important point. India's first graduates were, who are the first graduates? Chandramukhi, Vasu and Kadambari Ganguly. These both were first graduates from India. Sometimes they may mention in a one person name, sometimes two persons name. Right. So you have to know two, uh, two persons, uh, two graduates names. So one is the Chandramukhi Basu. And another one is the Kadambari Ganguly. In 1875, one Muslim university was established. That is Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College. So in Aligarh, one Muslim college was established. That college name was Mohammedan Anglo Oriental College. Later on, it had changed as Aligarh University. In 1878, a general council of education in India was started in London. Right. In 1871, what happened here? State educational departments were established. But in 1878, what happened? General Council of Education in India. It was started where? In London, not in India. Actually, it was started in London. In 17, 1765 to 1863, if you observe, the lion's shares of grants for education went to the Calcutta, Madrasa and Kashi Sanskrit Colleges. So, British government has given grants in aid. But uh, most of the part of this grants in aid went to the two colleges. One is the Calcutta Madrasa and Kashi Sanskrit Colleges. From which year to which year? 1765 to 1863 by the time. Halakbandi schools were established in Agra in 1882. And P.L. Rawat, so he has, uh, as per his report, according to him, 21 lakhs of students were studying in 82,916 schools by the 1880s period. By the time, 21 lakhs of students in how many schools? 82,916 primary schools and uh, this uh, Thomas Munro said here name not mentioned Thomas Munro he said he observed the schools uh, of Swadeshi schools he observed the Swadeshi schools and uh, the Swadeshi schools uh, students uh, they go to the school at 6 o'clock and they start with the name of Saraswati they recite firstly Saraswati name and then they continue their studies and whoever the students comes late, they will be given the punishment of exercise. And they used wooden planks. They were called as a takta. They used wooden planks or slates also we can call. Right. The slates were called as a takta. And Jarwin. Jarwin was a British employee. And uh, what he did here. So he translated all the engineering classes books from English to Konkani and Marathi languages. Jarwin who was a... British employee, he translated all engineering classes books from English to Konkani and Marathi languages. It was helped to the Indian students. Thank you for watching this video. Whoever not subscribed my channel, subscribe the channel and like the video and uh, mention your opinion in the comment section.